My honor and pleasure to be here with Professor Robert Eisen, who is the Professor of Religion and Judaic Studies and Chair of the Department of Religion at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Thanks for taking time to talk. Well, thanks for inviting me. So our topic today is Gersonides on Providence. The Raubug uh, was the great 14th century French uh, rationalist um, who argues for an impersonal god and um, really has major insights um, on uh, rationalist theology and Jewish thought. So just can you give us the basics? I mean, you wrote a whole book in 1995, Grisanides on Providence, Covenant and the Chosen People. So I don't know if you can give the basics in a minute or two. But when we're talking about Providence in the Raubag's thought, Levi Ben Gershon, what, uh, what are we talking about here? Well, you have to see it within a larger context. Yeah. You know, this isn't really just about providence or any yeah. one particular issue. It's, yeah. it's how a 14th century philosopher, a major philosopher, dealt with the whole question of where the science of his time fit into his worldview. Mm -hmm. And he was somebody who accepted this science completely, uh, much more so than just about anyone else in his, in his era. Um, and so that in itself is very interesting. Um, what's also interesting is that this, the science that he ex that he accepted entailed the idea that God was an impersonal being, meaning that he was more kind of like a computer program in the sky mm -hmm. than he was the personal God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, there are a lot of people who think you know think of God in those terms, but it's really amazing that a 14th century, very devout Jewish philosopher. And a famous Jewish philosopher thought that he was kind of Spinoza before Spinoza, mm -hmm. but um, he was a Spinoza mm -hmm. that didn't abandon the Jewish community mm -hmm. um, and continued to live a very, I guess, what you might call an orthodox life, even though that word orthodox is more. What modern. is the Raubach drawing off of? What sources is he drawing off to make his arguments? Well, he, he was somebody who knew everything about everything at his mm -hmm. time, and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why he was this very great thinker. He was a philosopher, he was a biblical commentator, his com commentaries mm -hmm. were read very widely in the Jewish community mm -hmm. in the Middle Ages. His Torah commentary was one of the first to be printed, mm -hmm. along with Rashi. So he was very famous in his time for what he knew about Judaism, but also as a scientist, as a mathematician, as an astronomer, mm -hmm. he, did, he did just about everything. Mm -hmm. So what does is, what is prayer look like? For, for the Raubach? Well, it, it looks the same as it does for a lot of the philosophers in his period, but uh, for him, there's, of course, the, 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 the particular problem of how it is that you can pray to a god if god is just a computer program. Yeah. But the trick in understanding your sonities uh, is that it really comes down to this. Uh, you, you don't expect God to do things for you actively like a person, but what you can expect from God is that he's a resource um, from which you can tap, in, into which you can tap, in order to draw positive mm -hmm. things down upon yourself. Um, it's like a computer programmer that knows how to get into the program in order to make use of all of its functions. So when you pray for God to do something, you're not necessarily praying for an impersonal being to come and intervene. What you're doing is you're using your mind to link up to the great mind in the sky, this mm -hmm. great computer program, so to speak, so that it will then be able to help you mm. uh, in, in, in various ways. So my understanding is that hashkacha pratit, that, uh, that this type of providence works differently for someone who is super enlightened. Is that right? The, 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 the view that is everywhere, really, in medieval yeah. Jewish philosophy, yeah. in Maimonides, and, and in, in, in Gersonides or Ralbag, and all the other major philosophers in that school, is that, yes, the more you developed your intellect the more you're able to connect with that great mind in the sky, which mm -hmm. is God. And therefore, it, what it does is it unlocks forces for you that wouldn't normally be available. Mm -hmm. You get information about the future, mm -hmm. which is prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, you might, if you're really on a high level, you can activate special laws that will, that will save you in disaster. Those are called miracles. You see, but the whole trick of it is that you are... You know, everything that looks in the Bible and in the Jewish mm -hmm. tradition as if God is taking initiative is actually you taking initiative toward mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. in order to bring God's, the potential of what God is down upon you in mm -hmm. positive ways. Mm -hmm. That's what providence is. Mm -hmm. So going back to Nisim, going back to, to miracles, how do the miracles in the, in the Chumash, in the Bible, uh, how are those understood by him? For example, I, I, I recall in the vaguest sense of Kriyat Yamsuf, the splitting of the sea, is just a natural event that happens at the right moment. But 
is that more or less right? And and and, and how does he explain other miracles we see in the well, Bible? Well, not not quite. Yeah. I mean, some people have understood Rolbach that way, yeah. and I don't understand them that way. Okay. I think okay. that it, it wasn't just something that happened at the right moment. It's that it's that you had a leader like Moses, yeah. um, that had a kind of special connection with God, yeah. that tapped into these special laws. In other words, w- w- what miracles are, are are natural events that are just very unusual nat- natural mm-hmm. events. He mm-hmm. says at one point right. that a, 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 a stick can turn into a snake if you knew how to rearrange all of the elements mm-hmm. in the stick mm-hmm. to become a snake. Mm. But what a miracle is, is an, a kind of an unusual series of events where uh, that transformation takes pers- uh, takes place instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Same thing pretty much with uh, the uh, splitting of the Red Sea. Normally, you know, when you need the Red Sea to split for you, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But if you have that level of intellectual ability and you can tap into these special laws into right. God right. and activate that part of God to work for you, right. you get these lo- what are essentially laws of miracles. Mm-hmm. In other words, mm-hmm. miracles are, are like natural events in that they function according to laws, but but just very unusual. Laws. And uh, forgive me for totally forgetting this, but the, there, there, I remember some distinction between the general and the specific. Yes. Uh, but, and, and how nature works and how we tap into that. Can you remind me how that works? Yeah. Well, you know, the, yeah. the, <laughs> how to summarize in, yeah. in you know, very short. Yeah. But generally, yes, there are d- different levels of providence. There, there, is a, there is a level of hashkacha that is very general. You know, God creates the species, Every species has its defense mechanisms, mm-hmm. you know, some have claws mm-hmm. that, you know, they have fur in order yeah. to keep them warm. Um, and of course, people also have things that they're given that sort of generally protect them. Yeah. We're all born with, with an intellect. We have muscles to fight against our enemies. Right. And so that's kind of general providence. Mm-hmm. But then there are these more individual levels of providence mm-hmm. that are specifically tied to the intellectual, to the perfection mm. of the intellect mm. in, in, in specific individuals. Yeah. So my understanding is that uh, to understand our world, theologically, we have to give on one of three, omnipotence, benevolence, or that there actually is evil in the world. Right. And everyone kind of gives on one. A traditionalist is going to deny that there actually is evil. Suffering might not be evil. It's for our good. Um, and in this case, I think what the Rabbug is willing to give on is, um, is omnipotence, in a sense, in right? In some sense, yes. And so I wonder, there seems like to be two main routes one can take there. One can either say God is in it, God's nature is not capable of doing something, it's just not the way God can work, versus kind of a tsimsum, a pulling back, a, a, a limiting of God's influence on the world for to enable freedom. Very is he kind of in the former or latter? In the here? first. In, okay, so first, it, it's within the, the nature of divinity. To not be able to do certain things, and that's not a lacking. Remember, this is a God right. who is just. This is a God who's static. Right. This is a right. God. The, the God of Aristotle that he essentially right. adopts yeah. is a God that is static. Again, yeah. I use the analogy of the great computer program in the yeah. sky, because that's I think the best right. analogy. Right. You don't expect a computer program. Right to correct itself, to yeah. limit itself. It right. just is what right. it is, and right. it does what it does. And so by doing this, one can still hold on to a model of divinity where of benevolence, God is good, yes, and not have to sacrifice that my suffering is real, and that suffering is evil. Yes. And, um, and maintain a relationship with a God who is not able to intervene. That's right. And is that, I mean, it's, it, it would be, uh, it would be uh, an abuse to, to equate that with some sort of liberation theology. But there does seem to be an overlap in some sense, because that's not a personal God here. Liberation theology is all about a God who cries. Mm-hmm. But there is some overlap in a sense of, of kind of a, a God witness to some degree, right? Well, again, you can only use those terms of uh-huh. God in okay. a very metaphorical okay. way. Right, right. Look, a lot of people are, you know, when I teach this to people, uh, especially to Orthodox yeah. Jews, they're very upset at this idea. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, there is something kind of liberating about yeah, it. Because absolutely. what it means is that everything is really on us as mm-hmm. human beings. To That's tap right. into God's potential, and that right. we shouldn't be there saying, "Well, let's blame God for this." That, so when that. I when we go to Teshuvah and we pray for healing, we're not saying God intervene in the world and raw bugs. That we're recommitting to our moral commitment as a community to take care of one another, essentially. That's but you see, that's going a little too. That's being uh-huh. too modern. Okay. He's saying that what you're doing is you're actually finding ways to connect to the divine okay. mind in order to bring down mm-hmm. upon you the mm-hmm. his emanation mm-hmm. on you. Mm-hmm. you know, Even, in other words, you're yeah. you're pressing yeah, yeah, on yeah. a on a function, on right. your computer key, right. to make the computer program Even an do average something. congregation without these... Yes, yes. okay, yes. interesting. Yes. So um, so uh, how, how can this be helpful to folks today? People who are grappling today in the 21st century, how can 
the Raubach's understanding help us? Oh, I think it's critical, actually, because we're living in an era in which there are a lot of young Jews and a good number of older ones who have uh, found themselves doubting the principles of Judaism because mm -hmm. of the fact that yeah. they have science and technology and all of these things that we've developed that yeah. really cast doubt on whether the principles as they were understood in classical mm -hmm. Judaism can still be maintained, mm -hmm. uh, including this question of whether a God intervenes. Yeah. You know, so, and it's not just science and technology yeah. is the problem, it's also the Holocaust, which has convinced a lot of people that there couldn't be any such God. Mm. But what Raoul Bach does for us is that he gives us a perspective on God that allows Jews who have those doubts to remain Jewish and to remain traditionally Jewish. Because what Raoul Bach teaches us is that you can still believe in a God who's not omnipotent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and still be a very committed Jew. Mm -hmm. The Raoul Bach was. Yeah. He, he kept all 613 right, commandments, right. and he was an expert. He was considered to be a Rishon, yeah. meaning yeah, an expert right, on right, Wachah. Right. So he was actually, you know, right. we, we would look at him as orthodox, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah, so right. anachronistically. Yeah. That's right, anachronistically yeah. we would say he's orthodox. <laughs> right. and, you know, and I myself have taught students this, you know, this, this particular philosopher, yeah. and many of them sent, feel a sense of relief because they, f they, they felt they had to give up on their Judaism right. just because they couldn't believe in right. a God who was all-powerful. Right. Right. And this God, if you believe in this type of God, you can still remain in Jew. I recall he goes one step further than the Rambam, but I'm not hearing it in what you're saying. How in Providence does he go one step beyond Maimonides? Uh, well, that's a complicated discussion yeah. because he, you know, there are ways in which he goes one step beyond. There are ways in which he takes uh -huh. one step back. Okay. There are things that he simply disagrees with about, you know, about, you know, specific things when it comes to providence. So okay. Okay. I wouldn't want to compare the okay. two. And and if okay. you want to have another yeah, 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 discussion yeah. Yeah. podcast about right. yeah, yeah. Maimonides, right. that could take up about okay. twenty minutes too. Okay, good. So my last question for you then is, um, what sparked the uh, what sparked this interest for you personally? Um, in writing a whole book about the Rabbah, not many people have done that. Um, you're probably one of five, I bet. Well, I think the first thing was masochism. Uh, <laughs> who could I pick that would, yeah, you know, would yeah. make my, you know, make, make me tear my hair out for six years? Um, no, I think that the reason why I gravitated toward him was just because he was so damned interesting. Mm -hmm. I personally believe in a personal God. Yeah. I'm not in Raul Bach's right, camp. Right, I right. believe in a God who is a real yeah. being, who's right, loving, right, and right. actually who I can pray yeah, for, yeah, right, and right. may help me in my time of need. Yeah. But what I found so amazing about this particular thinker is the is the originality of yeah. his thinking. Yeah. And in, as an academic, what always interests me the most um, isn't just somebody that I can relate to and agree with, but somebody who shows true ingenuity and brilliance yeah. in trying to bring many worlds together the yeah, way that a guy yeah. like this did. Was he a product of his era? Is, is what he's producing make sense in the historical context he's in? Well, every, every, yeah, yeah. every thinker right. does. That's right. You know, right. yeah, I mean, to some extent he does. Of course he does. Right. Um, but, but he also did things, you know, the things that I'm talking about yeah. were um, controversial enough, and we really have yeah, to right. include this in yes, the interview. Right. It's very important. He didn't get off scot-free. Yeah. After his lifetime, when... Jews began to react very negatively yeah. to this kind of yeah. philosophy. Yeah. And the Rambam, too, they blamed Raul Bagh. They, they came down his very... Books. They, they, burned <laughs> they burned his, his books. books. They <laughs> also burned Maimonides' books. The yeah. Rambam's books were also burned. Yeah. But he was controversial in his time. You know? yeah. And again, it's those kinds of thinkers that I yeah. find so interesting. Very nice. Thank you very much. Fascinating Thank stuff. You. Thank you. Wonderful.